It's the last bring your own ball of the season here on FCUM TV. The station dedicated to Football Club United of Manchester and the shadowy figures behind some of Greg Dyke's better ideas, including Roland Ratt, Michael Barrymore's My Kind of People and the popular Barrymore sidekick, Swampy. Hey. We're all in wind-down mode here, which is why you're going to see less football and you're going to hear less football and there's going to be more sort of lifestyle chit-chat and a man you've never seen before and who won't feature in the rest of the programme. Also coming up, Andy Walsh on what constitutes a smart casual look in the post-gig lane office environment era. Carl Marginson on whether a metatarsal is the injury that's the most fashionable anyone involved with football can have. And finally, a man who is not from Gorton or any of the other places that apparently rhyme with his surname, such as Cholton and Broughton, and Royton, which apparently does rhyme, but only if you're so northern, you're the type of person who pours gravy onto Eccles cakes and eats them with a knotted handkerchief. Advance! <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, man. You twat. <laughs> Hello again. All the insight, intrigue and even a certain romance in the last month of the season. A period so heartbreaking it's taken us a further month to contemplate viewing the footage again. First, it's interview time though and a man who requires no introduction but the conventions of television dictate that he gets one. It's the general manager of FC United, Andy Walsh. Hey! Uh, how have you been managing generally? <laughs> Very well, thank you. Since a player, it's not easy to take, is it? I mean, it's been a kick for everyone, and you would really love to go to Most and a division up would have been terrific. Uh, yeah, of course we would. You know what I mean? We're a football club, and you want to progress every year, and um, that means winning something, getting promoted. But I think we can look back on the last season with some satisfaction, really. We have progressed. It's always the challenge that um, the board sets Marge at the start of the season, and we finished in a higher position than we've ever been. Scored more goals than we've ever done in anything outside the Northwest Counties, I think. Um, more points, etc. Um, so we've definitely progressed, and off the field as well. I'm not just talking about Moston. I'm talking about um, what we're doing now with the, with the youth development and plans for an academy and, and employing Paul Bright as our um, sports development manager. All, Marge is involved in all of that, and so that that is progress. Um, so everybody's disappointed about the playoffs, but to be honest, we haven't got. We haven't got the luxury of sitting around licking our wounds for very long. You've got to get on with it. So we're getting on with it. And you've got plenty to get on with as well. So what's the latest on Moston? Um, well, anybody who's been down there recently will see there's been huge progress just, just in the month of May, really. The, uh, all three um, of the uh, main stands are up apart from, or three of the stands are up apart from uh, the St Mary's Road end, which is the stand that we've um, salvaged from Northwich Victoria. That's due on site towards the end of May. Um, the floor slab's now been poured in the main clubhouse, so the block work started to go in, so the rooms are starting to be formed. Um, I was uh, on site um, early on in the month and they were pouring the, uh, pouring the concrete for the, for the first floor. Um, there's footage that Kay and Richard have done showing, uh, showing that on the, on the YouTube channel. And it, it's really all starting to come together now. So um, we're talking about the, the fit out phase um, at this stage, the, the construction phase and the engineering phase, if you like, is, is now um, coming to the close of its first stage. And then we've got the artificial pitch going down at the end of May. Um, the grass for the, or the, 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 um, the construction of the main pitch is also going down uh, before the, the end of the month pitch. as well. 
Well, at the moment it'd be floating because the place is flooded and what we're trying to do is we're trying to break up the surface um, at the risk of putting everybody to sleep. We've got uh, this a very clay uh, clay soil, so we've got we've we've got to be very careful about how we um, how we treat that. So you've got to break up the surface to allow it to dry out, otherwise it gets spongy and it's quite a bit of work goes into that. So we've employed um, a pitch specialist as well as our uh, pitch contractor. We've got a pitch specialist overseeing all that, who's done um, pitches all over the world and uh, you know high standard Premier League standard. He's done pitches for for uh, major international tournaments like Commonwealth Games, rugby tournaments, and that sort of thing. And we took him on right at the very beginning, a guy called David Hemstock, and um, he's been fantastic because he helped us with the tender for the for the uh, pitch contractor, but also all the way through the process, he's been there advising us on uh, the best thing we can do to, to get the best surface, and helped us with negotiating um, for on the on the prices that we've been getting. So um, we're quite quietly confident that. Given the desire we uh, we've got within the club to have the best pitch possible, that we've got the best team possible to deliver that for us, um, the floating pitch I know will uh, cheese Alan Argrave off, but that might not be going in. But we are uh, looking at uh, how we can improve the um, the growing the root zone, if you like, and the and the uh, irrigation on the pitch as well. Yeah. To be fair, that was a bad question, but I will say. <laughs> But David Hemstock is a solid name, a solid name. So it's, looking at the YouTube channel, you can see it's reached a bit, uh, which is the equivalent of my favourite bit of Grand Designs. You know, when they've, they've had the sort of financial bit and it's all, oh, what's going to happen? And then there's just a lovely long shot with the sun on. So it must be quite exciting for you with the rooms being formed and all that. Yeah, it is. I think, uh, I think I'm, I'm, I've got to admit, I'm a bit past that uh, at this stage now where I'm just sort of looking at the bits coming out of the ground thinking oh that good and that I'm sort of starting to think about spaces now and thinking how we're going to use them um, but it's, oh, it's still my cigar you still get that sort of thing <laughs> they, they still get a buzz though of like when you, you know, I've had the privilege and opportunity to, to go up onto the onto the uh, platform at the back of the seating area and just look at the and imagine the the ground yeah, taking place and it's uh, and it's, <laughs> it's it, it is it is it is fantastic. Um, is it going to be big enough? That's the uh, that's the question that people keep asking. But um, I think we should all be very proud for, a, for for what we've done. I was in a meeting today with with uh, the QS, the quantity surveyor, and um, he was he actually said to me today. I don't think you'll mind me saying this because I won't give his name. But he's um, he was saying to us today, our build is actually going to cause them some problems because we've got so much out of the budget that we've got in terms of the size we've got two grass pitches we've got a full size artificial we've got a stadium pitch we've got all the stands that go with it a 5,000 capacity ground classroom function all that and we've got that for less than six million and there's other clubs phoning us up and saying well how much is you know what's your budget been like now have you done that and the only thing you can say to them is through craft graft and a great deal of imagination that's we've we've uh, we've, we've we've got a lot for our money you should be an advertiser with slogans like that shouldn't you <laughs> i think um and i am still good though for my season ticket for walking with status dogs though aren't i i can do i can do that at any time on any surface you, you, you need to sp- you need to speak to the board about that i believe you do have a board member on the uh, council okay later, all right, well, fair enough. No, listen, you should be proud, obviously, but, I mean, are people... Do you, are you physically, uh, emotionally seeing people who are one round who perhaps weren't before? Because you're quite kind to people in the press who maybe slagged you off. You know, are, are you seeing people more and more think, oh, actually, it's all right, this? I think I wasn't necessarily... I might, I might have said some kind words about people in the press, but I, I think I, what I did was that, was that acknowledge the campaign that people waged. You know, I've been a campaigner all my life and I recognise when people have worked hard at something and when they, you know, in their case, they were trying to stop us. Um, we've, um, we try to engage with them, we try to address their concerns and look at uh, their genuine fears about what, um, what this development might bring to their area. And they kept going. Um, they pulled uh, a fast one with getting the judicial review. And I genuinely, it's not just, um, patronising or kindness, it's, it generally take my hats off to them for what they've done. It's cost the project four or five hundred thousand pounds in, in, in total. But, um, you know, I think as, as campaigners ourselves, as a football club, you've got to acknowledge when, when, uh, when other people have, have shown that, that level of determination. So, you know, what we've got here at the club 
is a real sense that we're all in this together. We are all doing it together. You know, you, um, you talk to Marge, you talk to the players, and there's a genuine belief in the football club as a club, and that's what's missing from football. You know, you look at the stuff that's come out of the FA Commission. It's not about clubs. It's not even about football. It's about big business now in the Premier League, and hang the football. You know, this League Three that they're that they're talking about. If that was brought in, it wouldn't be full of young English talent. Because just like they can label Welsh lamb for grazing it in North Wales for a few weeks, they bring a, they bring a young lad from Africa, somewhere else in Europe, South America, and they put them into an academy. For a, they put them into an academy for a few months, coach them for a few months, and he counts a homegrown player. So anybody who thinks that League 3 is going to be full of English players is kidding themselves. So for us, to actually be running against that and to be making progress and an advancement against that is not just something which I'm very proud of, but it also is a beacon to every other football fan who's completely brassed off with the way the game's going. But will the previously unconvinced people, the, the people who failed to see in the past that that's what it's about for FC, the people who have other views on FC, and there are quite a lot of them in Moston anyway, the people who are around that ground and opposed it, do, do you, can you see that you might be winning people around on that? I think uh, I'm, down the, I'm down the site uh, two or three times uh, a week um, and um, every time I go past, uh, sorry, every time, I, every time I'm down the ground there's people that go past and uh, who are all saying they can't wait for it to, for it to open. I'd, um, on Monday this week uh, there was a guy um, walking, uh, walking on the other side of the road as I was getting in my car, pushing a toddler in a buggy and uh, quite aggressively <laughs> said to us so uh, when's that place opening then so it's well September and they said I can't effing wait he says because I don't want this little one to be uh, to be left with nothing to do because there's now to do for kids around here um, he's having a he's having a season ticket the other two kids are having a season ticket so I just said to him I said you know to, do you follow football now do you go to football now he says I've never been out of Ford to go and watch at United or City and that was a guy he was in his late twenties, got three kids, and in his adult lifetime, he's never been able to afford to go and watch football, but he will now. Yeah, fair enough. Um, kit it out then. So getting back to the build, there's been this project. How's that gone? Uh, blown us all the way, to be honest. When we originally started the kit it out campaign, um, we we aimed to to get enough money to to help us furnish the, the main function room. Um, we smashed that target. So we had a um, conflict about it, decide what we were going to do. And we said, well, we need extra funds for the kitchen. We were facing the prospect of one of the areas where we could cut back a little bit was on the kitchen. You know, when the budget gets squeezed the budget, uh, on, on different areas. So we, um, we, we thought we would just go for what they call overfunding in the uh, crowdfunder world. And uh, we set ourselves a target of, of, of 20K as we're putting this program together when we're a couple of days away from closing uh, that kit it out but as it stands at the moment um, I think we will end up being the biggest crowdfunder project that crowdfunder have ever seen and um, their biggest to date I think was 41k I think we'll beat 41k or come very close to beating it and that after everything we've done you know 1.9 million on community shares we, we, we've set a target for I think we'll hit that 300,000 pounds on on development fund all the money we've, we've raised so far to actually do that as well, I think it's nothing short of phenomenal. What kind of kitchen do you get for 41 grand? Because I, <laughs> I've, I've got this place in Italy that I'm, I'm struggling very much to do, to do up and Keith, there's any spare bits. I know you <laughs> Listen, I actually said 41K, but we've already done the furnishings is 26K, so we're looking for another 20 for the kitchen, all right? All right, well, so, still a good kitchen, that, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> I expect tremendous tater hash for that kind of money. And I don't use the word tremendous lightly. I've had to rescue it from decades ago. Uh, so uh, the squad rebuilding at this uh, uh, stage, it's, it's that time of year. What does it mean at this level of football to someone in your position? Is it is it really just the managers who get on with it? Or do you, do you are you sort of involved with every nook and cranny of every detail of it? Um, not every nook and cranny. I, uh, um, the day after the um, we, we uh, well it wasn't even the day after actually because um, Margie did his foot in I'm his chauffeur at the moment so on the way back from the from the game against Ashton we were talking about um, what we were going to do next season um, and uh, we already had um, 
three targets at that time that we talked about before the playoff semi. Um, we'd already been having conversations about what we might do for Conference North. We were quite satisfied with the quality of squad that we've got, that the majority of those players would see as good in Conference North um, if we did get promoted. More than happy that those players can do the job, as you know, as Carl will tell you. Um, there's two or three targets we had then. We've, we've had further conversations um, since then. We've got, um, we've, we've got some exciting prospects, people who want to come and play for this football club. People who at the awards night would hear Liam Brownhill, you know, played at a senior level, non-league, who said he'd been mithering Jerome, his mate, to come uh, to come to FC United. There's lots of other players out there as well who want to come to this football club. Margie's job is picking the best. Yeah, and you might just have some from uh, within because of the development squad having done the double. That that must please you a, a great deal. Yeah, we've got two or three lads out of the, out of the development squad who, who are going to be asked to pre-season training. Uh, exciting prospect. We're still talking about where we're going with with the development squad and with with the with the academy new academy coming on board, so everything we wanted to do is give young people an opportunity to play football is one of those targets we set ourselves when we first established in two thousand and five, and Broadhurst Park will give us that opportunity. Yeah, and something to build on, isn't it? A great effort that by all involved, really. Fantastic, and it, it, you know, Paul Bright coming in, uh, supporting the work that Chucks and Darren Lyons have been doing with with the, with the younger players, um, will only strengthen our own. Brilliant. Andy Walsh, thanks a lot. So everything's focused on Moston then and the first full season not at Gig Lane, unless you're one of those crossover FC United, very supporter type people. Anyway, to commemorate FC United leaving Stad the Gig for the final time, uh, we've created this little bit of video. Do enjoy it. nostalgic day. I arrived with my daughter about half eleven this morning and uh, and as I did on the on the first home game back in 2005 against Darwin I think it was. So uh, it, it's, it's really quite emotional I think. What anyone has ever said about Berry, I think it's been a, a really good home for us. It's been a great staging post and it's a massive stepping stone on our way to Moston to Broadhurst Park. So uh, it is quite an emotional day. Um, I don't know to be honest. I'm a bit. I'm. I'm not quite as uh, tearful and emotional as Tom's coming across over it. Not quite that bad, but um, we will miss it in a sense. And it's been good to us. And obviously, without Berry, it wouldn't have got past Christmas, as the saying goes. But on the other hand, it's not ours. It's not in Manchester. It's out of the way, and it's just going to be so much easier to get away from here and get into our own grounds and, and do our own thing. So. Sad in a way for it to go, and it's a little bit strange. But on the other hand, more looking forward to what's coming next season. It's emotional, actually. I'm feeling a bit emotional. Yeah. So emotional it's, in a good way. Well, it's it's mixed feelings, isn't it? Like you know, got a lot of memories here. Like you know, and a lot of the history. In fact, the whole of the history of the club so far is here, isn't it? Like, but I mean, said that we need to move on to past as new. And as you know, like you know, we've got this new ground that we've been that we're building at the moment, and it looks fabulous. So just can't wait for September now, really. So we're looking forward as well as like kind of thinking about the past as well. So it's a bit emotional. It will be the last day at Gig Lane. <laughs> this is the last day at Gig Lane. Um, I feel great because we're going home, and uh, that's that's what it's all been for the last nine years. So 
it's great. It's a good feeling. It's a good feeling. This is going to be the last day here. So. Yeah, it's going to be a good day. It's beautifully sunny. The crowd's fantastic and we're going to win. That's the most important part of it, isn't it? Let's hope it is. Don't want to be back here again in the playoffs. Uh, really looking forward to a good game, good atmosphere, big crowd, you know, lots of people coming down and the sun's come out for us as well. So excited and nervous. The back of this place because it's been good to us. Uh, but then glad to be moving on, onwards and upwards, with our own ground and we don't have to pay Berry as much money as we did to rent this place. So I think Berry are going to miss us more than we miss them. Although we do appreciate everything they've done for us, onwards and upwards, FC United, it's the beginning of a new era. And I've got my daughters and my granddaughter here today for the last day at Gig Lane, so Brilliant. FC. Thanks to Berry for putting up with us all this time and uh, onwards and upwards to what we all want, what we've all been fighting for, our new home in Moston. And I'm just finished on the um, report of the game that day. FC 93, Padium 2, Jules Spencer, formerly of the board. Most people will know Jules. And it says, FC United made it two wins out of two with a hard-fought 3-2 win over previously unbeaten Padium. Virtually constant pressure from FC United finally told in the 30th minute when Rory Patterson was brought down in the penalty box. Patterson stepped up to score the penalty himself. The lead, however, only lasted one minute as Dennis Hill capitalised on a mistake in the United defence to make it 1-1. Patterson restored United's lead on the stroke of half-time before ADO made it 3-1 on 75 minutes. A late consolation from Padium's Craig Chadwick did little, however, to dampen the enthusiasm of the 2,500 in attendance. So that's a quick look back at our very first game here at Gig, and uh, I hope you've all enjoyed the ride. Right, later in the show we'll be discussing football with Swampy, Woodsy and uh, Alany. Now we could be accused then of spreading ourselves too thinly. The next guest is a man whose name does that all by itself. It's Margie. Three. Alongside him on the couch of confessions is Mike Norton uh, without any reprimand from the referee. Uh, owing solely to the fact that there is on this occasion no referee. So let's get the hard bit done then first. Playoffs again, Margie. Uh, <laughs> to be honest, um, absolute nightmare. But it's done, it's dusted, and we move on. The, you know, at the end of that game, what Ashton did was the way that you've done it to many teams. Yeah, yeah. And, and it feels uh, better for, for, for <laughs> the other side. Yeah. Um, it was just minging, though, wasn't it? And have you ever been in a game where you get, you get done? the last bit of normal time and the last bit of extra time as well it's just that's a first for me um, it was it was gut wrenching it was gut wrenching more, more so for the players and obviously the supporters but um, because to be fair I think we deserve to to be promoted this year with the way that we've you know gone about things in, within the season um, but it wants to be so it's, it's one of them things where we just go again and come back stronger the, the manner of it was a first what happened wasn't a first, especially for you. Well, that's seven years in the trot for me. Jinx! <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't, I didn't see him score in the in injury time. I was on my head stitched up, so there was Donny who come running in and said they've scored. I thought, oh, because Margie just took me off. I was cursing him, to be fair. It's a bit of a not me gov, that, innit? But to be fair, the, <laughs> the, 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 there was. That, that time you were holding on to it, weren't you? You'd made substitutions, three substitutions really by that time, to, to, almost to hold on to that game. You were, you were not helped really by the fact that you'd played a team to try to win the title, whereas they'd been able to rest players. And it showed, didn't it, when it got to that game? And possibly. I think um, I still had us down for, for beating them, whether that be by penalties or whichever way we were going to do it. Um, you know, we had a great chance, I think, when we won the up to go 2 0 up, and I think that would have, would have absolutely killed them. Um, you were right. I'm not mentioning names. Um, you know, it's, <laughs> it, it was one of them. And the way that we scored the goal, you know, to get back into it, I think uh, Charlie Raglan's won a clean header. It's it had it come off um, their centre half, who had moved up front by that point, um, and fell right at, at his feet in the box. You know, it's, it's one of them. You can't do, can't do good for, for training, you know. 
Yeah, I mean, they, they really did change tactics there, didn't they? I mean, you say come back stronger. We've, you know, we see that in, even in the Premier League, everyone's hoping that doesn't happen with Liverpool. When they get close, you hope, oh no, we pack it in. Is it is it just a cliche or is it true? How do you, how do you back that up? How do you come back stronger after something just like that? Just learning lessons from earlier on in the season, you know, there's points where we've dropped, um, the likes of the way at Stafford, the way at Whitmer, where we've been in, in good positions and we should be really you know, seeing them games through. So it's learning lessons from that, really, um, because any one of them games, and we're up, we're up as champions. Um, Buxton at home, another example. Um, they're the ones where we've really got to focus and make sure that, for because it is FC United, you've got to be switched on for, for minute one to minute 90. I mean, I, I'll tell you that, I say it week in, week out. Um, maybe look at a different approach on that front. Get somebody else to start saying it as well. <laughs> <laughs> because it's, this this league is just it just seems to be the hardest thing to get out of, and you've alluded to many things that just keep biting you. There's just different things that keep biting you. Yeah, it's just making sure that we focus down on them. You know, last the thing that we have seen is progression. Um, this the, the last year when we we lost to Edinburgh in the playoff final, I think we were 15 points behind um, North Um You know, I could think of them off the top of my head. You know, we, we, we've closed the gap because we're only a point behind. Charlie, who were eventual champions. Next, I mean, you, you, you're losing two very good centre arse, you know, for good reasons as well, and you'll have some other rebuilding to do. So, what are your early thoughts on that? If it, if it is early, really, you know, the way you have to go on with it. That, that was, I was on the phone the day after the playoff uh, semi final, trying to, you know, get people in and that'll continue right through, um, right through the summer. Um, the phone has been quite um, hot. <laughs> um, because people do want to come and play for this club. I think it's important that we um, maintain the majority of the, the lads from last year um, because they've showed um, with what they achieved last year that they, that they can get up there. Um, but we do need to obviously strengthen as well. And transfer, Mike, at Christmas, obviously, if you, the playoffs are looking <laughs> on again. <laughs> uh, it seems to me that from outside the dressing room that both Raglan and Davis carried on very professionally, if you like. Uh, Despite having signed professionally, was that was that what it was like in there, or did they start swanning about with fur coats and crowns and that? The type of lads they are, they just like just down to earth guys. They'll just want to play football on Saturday and obviously midweek. So for them to go to a pro club, it's just a bonus for them, really. At what kind of level of player churn, if you like, are you expecting? Are you, are you sort of thinking, I mean, do you, do you like to get three or four in? Does it give it a fresh impetus for you? Or do you think, right, if we keep more or less the same lads, I think we can do this next season? Well, I think if we keep most of the lads, obviously he's got two centre-halves to, to fill the boots, but I think if we keep majority of the lads, I think we can do it next year. Obviously, I know we said it at the beginning of this season, but we had uh, mid-season, mid we've lost Ollie Banks, we've lost... John Worse not, we've lost Spider, uh, Spenner. I mean, it's big, big injuries we've lost. And uh, obviously, Chris Worsley. Yeah, Chris Worsley's in another one. Mr. Ronford. the best of him. Yeah, Mr. Ronford for a big part of the season, he's broken out. Yeah. All them kind of things, are, I think, get thrown into the mix. Um, I think the lesson that I've learned is the lads who, who came in to do the jobs when some of them players were out, maybe we could have been a bit, bit stronger. You know, but that's part of my job, that's something I'll be looking at. Have you also been looking at sort of play, players you've played against that you thought, oh hello, I'll have a bit of him if I get a chance? Yeah, yeah, with that, that, that's always happening, it's always ongoing that, you know, I can't make, mention any names, but... Can you not? I won't tell, <laughs> I won't tell Jim White and Natalie Sawyer. <laughs> no, it's, um, that, that's something, you know, you're always out there looking, I think um, Steve will, will tell you the, 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 these people on the radar um, that, that have been highlighted by the scouting, the scouting team. Which is headed up by Stephen Wayne, um, you know, and that's that's proved fruitful. It, it was fruitful last year, obviously, with the likes of uh, Tom and Charlie coming into the fold, and this year that, that as well. You know, we we're not just talking to names; we know the players that we're looking for. And do you want to? Uh, do you look at teams you might see as rivals next year for promotion and want to weaken them as well? Yeah, that can sometimes <laughs> play a part. You know, it's it's all it's all. It's all part of it, isn't it? You know, the, um, the the main reason you do that is because whoever they've got is a good player, and if you can strengthen us, that's good. That's that's the first and foremost. And if they need to replace somebody, then not a problem. Uh, I think last time I saw you in person, Mike, was when I was round at your house filming from Granada, and you put some shelves up for us. Was it in your daughter's bedroom? Yeah. 
They're still there, but I don't know they're there. They're still there. Well, they are still there, are they? Yeah, still there. Have you got the 3D TV that you had? I've, still, I've got a bigger one now. Good. Yeah, one. So, formations. <laughs> We, you changed it a little bit for, so, and, and, and went on a hell of a run and we were talking about this last time you were in and obviously there's always a, a clamour for more goals, more up top and it, it paid. Is that fair between you? How do you both see that one? Um, yeah, it paid. I think we had, it was down to personnel. You know, the, the, the reason for playing the three um, with the, and then the, the five in midfield was because we wanted to get Norts and, and Greaves together. You know, we've got players who can join in from midfield, um, but these two are goal scorers. And, you know, if you, however many goal scorers you can, you can fit on a football pitch, then you've got more chance of scoring, haven't you? How does he rank, Tom Greaves, in, in, in terms of who you've played with? He's up there. He's up there. Well, that's his position, goes without saying, no, but I mean... <laughs> he's probably one of the best I've played with, to be fair. Yeah. But, so, he's, he, like I say, good, put him in the right areas and he'll score your goals, won't he? Just, uh, I'll do all his donkey work. <laughs> yeah. I think he reminds me saying that. Yeah, whereas he might say he's got a good temperament. Yeah, he might absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, you've got the uh, FCUM radio on TV, player of the season. Simply vote, I think. <laughs> no, it's to do with uh, goals and hard work, though, isn't it? And that's what you're noted for, isn't it? I mean, uh, when I play badly, uh, I play at the back, and I think that whenever I watch you, I think, Christ. That, I'd been knackered, do you know what I mean? And I suppose that's, is that fair that that's one of the main considerations when putting him in? Yeah, he's, he's renowned for his, for his work rate, um, rather than his touch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, his, his work rate obviously creates opportunities for others, but even more so, he's a goal scorer as well, you know. Um, and it's all down to, to that hard graft. You know, if we've got 11, 12, people who put the work in that he does, um, we're not going to go far wrong. So if you're talking about retaining a, a sort of spine or a nucleus, if you like, you, you'd look at this man as being part of that? Oh, definitely, definitely. We've, we've, we've spoken and, um, you know, no, thankfully he's agreed to, to stay with us. Right, so you weren't, you weren't looking anywhere else, you weren't tempted to go anywhere else and no, finish no. off Monaco, haven't come in or anything? No, PSG came in, but I had to turn him down. <laughs> Oh, right. Well, she's going to borrow me his helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> how, how much, yeah, Len, yeah. How much are you uh, looking forward to, to, to moving grounds? How much for the players is it going to make a difference uh, to, to, get in, um, to get in your own stadium? Because it, from, a, from a sort of administrative point of view, it's very, very straightforward, isn't it? You know, you want everything in one place, but is it going to make a big difference to you, lads? It's like you can say, we can train there, play, play, play there. Obviously, the fans, you can call it at home. It's just a bit, bit big boost for everybody, really, in the club. There's going to be a bar, so final question. We've been running a, a bit of a sweep. Um, on which date can you predict that an opposition player is going to get mouthy and uh, get a slap? <laughs> the second home game. Second home game. <laughs> no. um, depends who we're playing. Yeah, all right then. Uh, if I could say, let's say... Um, Ruling uh, the gobby one who came up, uh, who played for Chorley and was at it like that uh, from the bench. If we can rule him aside, uh, who, uh, shall I put you in for fourth home game? Sean Tuck back in this league. <laughs> Sean Tuck. So we'll take it, uh, take it the first time that Sean Tuck plays. <clears throat> and that concludes a terrific interview. I think we can all agree. Thanks, gents. Appreciate your company. Uh, at a very inopportune time, my words have disappeared from there and the magic has temporarily disappeared. Um, in uh, true Titchmarsh style, I've brought it back now. Uh, and we can even edit that bit out. That's how clever it is, but they won't. Uh, so we've heard hints of it uh, throughout the show, but Broadhurst Park in Moston is shooting up quicker than a protagonist in an Irvin Welsh novel. And even being seen in a positive light by some who oppose the development. I went up there the other day to walk my pack of status dogs. <laughs> and uh, there was even talk of a new pet grooming salon for match days to ensure the capture of the hearts and minds throughout the entire community. Dr. D uh, Dr. K has done some more digging. Do you see what I did there? Ball and beat it.
Hello, and it's now the 12th of May. It's about a month since we were here last time and a lot's gone on as usual. Um, as you can see behind me, the main stand is nearly finished and we've also got this stand and the north stand. In terms of floodlights, when we came last time there was one floodlight and now we've got the floodlight that was there to begin with. Floodlight number two, floodlight number three and floodlight number four. Well, as you can see, we've got the whole length of the main stand now. It's the first time we've come and there hasn't been a big crane because I think they finished all the bit that's uh, put in the steel up on the roof. It's actually started to get a roof on it and also a floor. So we're going to head over there now and have a closer look. Right, we're here on the second floor. Um, we've got aluminium flooring with steel uh, reinforcements and the concrete's going to be poured into here. All this work's going on on this level at the moment. And when you pan round there, you can see the roof that's gone onto the main stand and then the mountains in the background. Rich is just going to pan round and show you that shot. When we look over the opposite direction, you can see where the artificial pitches and the 3G and the training pitch is going to be um, over that way. You get a great view here of all the perimeter of the ground. Um, a few of us met up this week to think about what sort of things we would like to plant um, around the ground, whether it's things to do with growing food, looking at different colour to do with obviously black, red and white or looking at plants that are good for pollinating insects. There's all sorts of ideas. And if you want to get involved in the gardening project, get in contact with us at the email at the bottom of the page now. Now, I know some of you have expressed an interest in this device here. And contrary to popular belief, it's not a dead rat or a chihuahua. What it is, it's called a Mr. Fluffy, and it cuts out the noise you would get from wind disturbing the sound. Well, this is the floor, which is going to have the function room and the other rooms on it. And this is quite exciting. We're overlooking the, where you find the centre spot. And we think this is where we'll have the big glass windows, where you'll be able to look out onto the pitch. It's a great view from here. Um, and when you look around, you can start to see the scale, really, of what we're going to have in terms of our function rooms. This is the main stand, as you can see. The roof's on and the whole length of it has now been built. So you can really start to imagine what it's going to be like with a crowd singing and cheering underneath here. Brilliant view. Something you'll notice because basically it's not there and that is pillars. There's no pillars in the way of your view. So you've got to hand it to the designers. They've done a fantastic job. So Winston, we've not spoke to you for a few months. How's it going? Well, it's getting to the exciting bit now. Yeah. Now, the, now the floodlights are up, it's yeah. looking like a yeah. I must admit, even I'm getting excited. Really? Yeah. Okay, that's excellent. I bet good. you're in a good mood today. Well, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't want to mention that, but yeah. <laughs> I'm in a very good mood today. Did you go and watch the match? I went in the ground. I didn't watch the match. I went to the end, you know, for the presentation. Right, okay. I was okay. in a pub nearby. Yeah. So you're looking forward to this going up? I am, yeah. I'm looking forward to the first game, actually. You're going to come? Yes. Oh, fantastic. Yes. Great. I don't know if I'll say that about United, but there you go. <laughs> Funny things happen, don't they? So this is Luke, who uh, works on the site. Can you tell us what you do? Yeah, I'm uh, one of the ground workers here, so I've been here from, from day one. So yeah, it's going, it's going all right. How's it going, do you reckon? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Bit of bad weather, but yeah, it's going, it's going all right. There's a lot of mud, isn't there? Yeah, a lot of mud. Yeah, time it's, to uh, time. But it's last last few weeks not been too bad, so yeah, it's going on. So you're enjoying it? Yeah, yeah, it's good, good project, yeah. yeah. Are you Big a football, football fan? fan? Yeah, massive United fan, so. Right, okay. So I enjoy it, yeah. I'm yeah. going to be coming down here watching. Oh right, yeah, excellent, definitely, yeah, definitely. good. Have you been to a match yet? What, FC? Yeah. I've, yeah, I've seen him a few times at Gig Lane. Oh great. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah big, big United fan. Even Steve's been down and he's a City fan. That's what I mean. <laughs> don't want him down there, <laughs> Brilliant, but, thank you. Right. Well, this is the bit underneath the main stand. You can see the uh, where we were just stood earlier there. And this is the concrete floors all being laid and they've started to build the walls, which is dividing um, the underneath into different rooms. So this is uh, looking good as well. They look like they're starting to do something to get ready for that now, is that yeah. right? Yeah, um, well, as you can see at the minute, there's a load of muck that's in the way, uh, there's a load of scaffolding, so what what will have to happen is all that land will have to be um, be cleared and prepared so that they can they can lie the steel on it, uh, for a landing area, they call it. Right. Um, that steel's the old stand from Northwich, Victoria, so that's on the way up, so we've got to wait for that to arrive. Um, which shouldn't be too too long within the next couple of weeks. Right. Um, and then the what they have to do then is they have to dig the bases, um, and 
on the the north stand and the west stand, the 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 columns are two bases, um, one in front of the other. The the east stand is three bases. Um, right. Okay. It's got it's got quite a large capacity that stand. Um, right. More yeah. than the others. Yeah. Well, that's it for May's update for Bring Your Own Ball as to what's been happening with the build. As you can see, they've made fantastic progress in the last month and we'll be back in a month's time to let you know where things are up to then. And in some news I've just been asked to read out, our Moston Broadcasting Unit will be making dedicated trips to the new ground every four weeks during the close season to keep you, our glorious dear audience, <laughs> up to date with the build's progress. The footage will be available on all digital platforms, including, of course, fcum.tv and something called YouTube, but not on Adapt Tape, which is a great shame to me. <laughs> now, very shortly, we'll be doing what professionals called proper analysing some ball games, yo. Our expert Swampy Stephen Wood and Alan Hargrave are here for just that purpose. See if you can discern which of the three has managed to stay sober. But first, on the Graham Kelly Memorial couch, it's our resident ladies man, Neil Boothman, and to walk us through the women's team and how they fared in the final months of the season. So, Neil, how did they fare on the final month of the season? Well, we won a trophy. We've got a share of a trophy in the League Cup. It was a more promising start to the sentence than how it ended. Yeah. Well, carry on. <laughs> I'm going to give you another chance. We didn't do too badly, I don't think. Um, I think we underestimated Middleton. Um, we played pretty well in most games, but against them, we just, um, whether we were tactically um, naive or what, I don't know, but we just couldn't manage them. Two cup finals is terrific for a nascent team, really, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, we, you know, we had a cup final last season. We had two this year. Maybe, maybe we'll get to three next year and win one outright rather than sharing one. But I think they've done well. I mean, they're still a, a learning team. We lost half the team last year. We've lost pretty much the spine of it. We've had eight different goalkeepers this year. That no team gets on well when you've got to make that many changes. But uh, well, not know, in one game. Not in one game. It was no. excessive. No, we, we had we had multiple goalkeepers in one game on a couple of occasions. But uh, um, I think we do. I think we do. We can consider that we've done a, a good season, really. Has it meant the reputation's grown? Are you seeing that people are sort of really wanting to to play for FC because you're one of the better women's teams in the area? Yeah, I think, uh, I think when Kate was on, she could probably speak about that a bit more than I can, and possibly Lee, maybe. She's gone now, that was last month, but you, you, you know, that's why you're here. Oh, right. <laughs> no, but seriously, I mean, you, you, you must pick that up, you must pick that up from yes. them, you're close to them. I mean, it generally is the reputation increasing, of people saying, you know what, I fancy a bit of that. Yeah, I still think that we're on the up, um, reputation-wise, as well as um, team quality, and I think we can uh, probably... There's still talk of rescheduling next year where they may we may get promoted even though we didn't win the league. That that still could happen. There's there's lots of things in the in the offing, but I think we can consider we've had a good season and the reputation's growing. We got to two cup finals rather than one. It's a good season. When we look at what's happening at the top end of the women's game, how far are the FC women's team from competing at that level? Five divisions. I don't mean it just in <laughs> logistical terms. I mean the thing is, yeah, five divisions, yeah. Well, but think but just a lot closer than the men's team are because yeah. I think there's very few women's games uh, the, the players in the women's game that are full time. There's only probably the the England setup and possibly one or two of the the prem. What I'm getting at is, can you envisage a time when, given that Manchester United don't have a, a women's team at present and if that continues could they be playing Manchester City on a regular basis? Uh, yeah there's no reason why we couldn't I mean they've got more than one team in the teams in the women's structure anyway because you can do that within the women's leagues so I mean we've already played them and beat them uh, but I, I presume obviously you mean the Premier team and there's no reason why we couldn't get up there at some point but um, and Broaders Park should, should help that along because like all the other teams we'll all be based in one area and we can and get everything done without being scattered all over the place. Beth Tattersall, an update please. Uh, we think she's going to try and uh, knit the tib and fib together without having to have an operation which means pins so we think at the moment that's what she's aiming for. She's had one check up that seems that she's heading that way so it's good news for her uh, comparatively but she, she's going to be out for six or eight months minimum. And what kind of recruitment are you expecting? I mean, obviously, it's, you're losing 
Fran Davis like halfway through last season and she used to score about 15 every week. Yeah, yeah, yeah I have to mention her every month. It's the law. <laughs> Play five a side with her dad. So, uh, I mean, uh, so she went to Dubai. Um, and then you get this kind of, I mean, you, you mentioned eight different goalkeepers. Are you expecting that kind of pattern to continue where you just have just millions of different players every year? Well, hopefully we can settle between the two, the, the ones who've pretty much come about halfway through the season between Mary and Chloe. I think we, those two should settle in and we should be able to just be, be able to play with just those two rather than the numerous ones we've had so far, quite a lot of outfield players, mostly the shortest ones for some reason, I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe they're the ones that turn up with gloves, that's what my mum used to say. Good. It's the, before it gets any more surreal, a uh, final question. Um, just in terms of what's going to constitute a really good season ne next season? I think we need to uh, win the league. I think we just need to, do, to win it outright. I mean, we thought we'd have done it this year, but Middleton turned, yeah. certainly turned up the pressure. Um, we, we fell short of the hurdle, but I think we can do it next year, as long as we keep the majority of the people together. Good man. Neil Boothman uh, deserves a round of applause from everyone in this room. All season, filming the old Neil Boo TV. Um, so with women's football in its rightful place, which is of course ahead of Swampy, uh, first team football now becomes us. Here on the city of Smart Objectives, please welcome back the board's Alan Hargrave, um, SEUM Reviews, Stephen Wood, and from the forbidden world of mind-altering drugs, it's Swampy. Hello. Uh, right, shall we start with uh, chronologically where we're going to start? Chorley. So that was just a bit daft, wasn't it, really? The two goals conceded, a penalty, and then that ridiculous second goal from that throw-in uh, was, was, well, it was hanging, wasn't it? It was it was a really difficult one at the end because we weren't sure at the end of the game as to whether we'd actually gained or lost points mm. at one stage. You know, we, uh, <laughs> their players were coming off and they were absolutely gutted at the end. Uh, if it had gone on for a few more minutes, I think I think we I think we'd have taken that. Uh, it was another one of those cases that we'd given ourselves a mountain to climb, and then we went that way and, and, and were successful. Uh, in, in pulling the game back, but I think that uh, it, it maybe took more out of us than it did them, really. I was surprised that you wanted to invade the pitch in that game. You chose that moment. What invasion of the pitch was this? <laughs> that was you, wasn't it, against Charlie? Although, I wish you get your shirt on. No. <laughs> no, 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 I'll take my shirt off and show you it's different in a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was an interesting one, but he only took his shirt off because been, he'd been grabbed as he ran out by someone on the bench. So that's why his, uh, his shirt disappeared at, uh, at, at that particular stage, the, the chat that ran on, yeah. It could have been, had it been a sort of extra, I don't think it cost any time, not in all seriousness, but they were getting so gobby, particularly when the second one went in, that you really, really wanted that third one more than, for, you yeah. know, for a number of reasons. Yeah, yeah. I, I, like I say, I, I think as far as the result went, that uh, it, it, it was split at the end. Their, their supporters were coming back at the end of the match and they were really pleased because they'd have taken the point at the start. Yeah. That was what they, so in the end I think when they stepped back after a day or two, I think Charlie sat there and thought that was the right result for them. I think that I think they were happy with that. Uh and, and I just think from our point of view you know, we needed to learn to not keep making a little mountain at the start of those games. It's brilliant having comebacks, don't get me wrong, you bulls and whatever. But I'm at that stage now, I'd like to be three 0 up. Mm. You know, yeah. 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 well, you get to leave for the pub earlier, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I mean I'm not allowed, I'm lost to leave. It, it's the two top teams in the division, really, yeah. playing, playing in the game. You know, we saw that when we played away at Chorley, you know, we scored a 93rd minute winner, um, and probably just edged it on the, on the evening. And, and Chorley, at our place, you know, the two top teams going head to head, and uh, you know, a couple of mis defensive mistakes which ordinarily wouldn't really expect from FC, uh, certainly with that run that we'd had. Um, and I think both teams came off that pitch thinking, well, you know, um, a point. I think everyone was. I think both teams were pretty happy with that. And uh, you know, it was uh, it was a monumental game, really. And um, you know, Chorley went on and won the division. But uh, it was uh, certainly very evenly matched the two teams. You know, the, you know, um, you couldn't really put anything between them, which was again, you know, it was good after great after football. Great, great crowd there. You know, the atmosphere was tremendous. And uh, let's hope next season, you know, we can get, uh, you know. That kind of crowd in, into into the new ground uh, with opposition fans because it is really nice to have them in there, opposed to you know singing against yourself week in week out. Well, they brought uh, eight hundred supporters. Yeah. yeah, well, we were guessing what the crowd would be, and I said yeah. about three two. Yeah. 
and uh, JP was the only one who reckoned it'd be any, anywhere near what was it four one that it came. Yeah, well, I mean, like we were saying on the radio, we, you know, it looks like it could be you know for me about four one four two for the evening, and you know it was uh, it was it was tremendous. You know, it's a great. You're good at judging these things from all those years of playing. Where's Wally, aren't you? Oh, well, of course, that's <laughs> right. yeah, yeah, that's the point. Yes. They told us they were going to bring about six hundred supporters, and there was something like eight hundred and fourteen there in the end of that. It was pretty much all there, crowd. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Most of the people who go to Charlie regularly yeah. were there, but. And that's testament to them, really, isn't it? You know, they've taken the entire crowd that normally watch them at home to an away game. You know, so you know, fair play to them. You know, the best team in the league. Yeah, you send them away in the right spirit. I mean, that ended the um, the winning run, but it took Buxton to end the unbeaten run. The uh, the, the fixture of the away club uh, was it five years now? One one home win. Um, you knew it was going to happen. I don't, when you look at the fixtures and you see Buxton at the end of the season, you think. That, uh, you don't want that to be a, a <laughs> crucial game, and, it, and it, it, it turns out. I don't know if there was a hangover from from the, the Charlie match or what, but it, it just never got going from kick one to to the yeah. ninetieth minute. It was just nothing at all. There was it, it, it wasn't even flat. No, it, 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 was, was, it was a poor it was game. Nothing there at all. And, and, and Buxton didn't really. You wouldn't say they they, they, they did well on the day. I mean, I, I was doing the radio with you, weren't I? That's right. Yeah. You know, the, the they did well on the, the day, but, but yeah, exactly. But they did. On a normal day, we, we win the game, don't we? We said they did. But, they did what we do to other teams. They did that day. They played in a way. Got got in front yeah. of us. Put two or three men behind the ball in front of the player. Did allow us to play our game. Nullified our left back and our, our, our left and right sided players so we could go forward. And they'd done the homework and they'd done the job right. Yeah, you know, they were the better well. team on the yeah, day. Yeah, um, yeah, they were. At that late stage of the yeah. season, though, you know, the one thing that I mean, that day we changed, we changed the formation slightly, didn't we? You know, uh, Adam Jones from right came off uh, after about thirty-two minutes, and um, it was just a poor day at the office for FC United. And they're going to get them games occasionally, but you hope they're the kind of games that you can just grind something out of. It wasn't to be. I think the hoodoo mm. of Buxton really. Um, you know, we need to put, we should have put to bed on that game. If we were going to be champions, that's the game we needed to win. And unfortunately, it wasn't to be. But you know, it's, uh, well, it's, it's a strange fixture. I mean, we always go to Buxton and win. I think we've lost once, and that's there's the, the one home mm. win. Yeah. And we've yet to. I think we've lost every game at Gigley, right? We, we have yeah, draw. Yeah, I think that lost every game. Like, like, it's just bizarre, you know. Well, like you said earlier, though, they they, they really fought for every ball. There, they, they you know, it was a fair. You know, when you came off at the end, I thought that was a tremendous... The only thing about that is, mm-hmm. you know, you put two teams together like that and the, the, you, you expect a home win. Mm-hmm. You, you know, at that, that time of the season, mm-hmm. that, that's a frustrating thing. Did it come if we'd have played, we'd have won the, we'd, you know, probably would have won the game. But they had nothing to play for, didn't they? Exactly. Not really, no. But yeah. Well, always, no, there's always something to play for against FC United. That's the problem, yeah. you see. That's the point yeah. you've got to make. Christ, I was only going to touch on this game. <laughs> oh, because move on. Right, move, I think, move. I think if Christ had been playing, he'd have stopped it either. Christ? <laughs> you said... <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, yeah, so no win there, despite uh, Greaves opening the score. And he's one of three scorers, back on winning ways against Grantham. Do you, do you want to talk about that briefly? Uh, yeah, right, well done, carry on. Yeah. Tremendous. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another 3 2 win at uh, Stanford. I mean, Notts, who was here before, got a double as well as our own goal. Would have been nice to bring him in on that, but um, really sort of typified his season, really. Didn't it? Yeah, do you want to talk about Stanford? Do you want to talk about Notts and his contribution? I think you should. The Stanford game, I mean, Notts was actually tremendous, and that's one of the reasons you know we, we, we presented him with the, uh, the player of the season for the sort of the radio and the TV, and it was about his endeavour. Certainly, I think he learned a lesson. Um, after being sent off on a number of occasions and petulance was a problem with it, that he had mm. in the same way as Jerome and Jerome has learned that lesson very quickly uh, this season and um, he was absolutely tremendous you know it was a tough game against Stanford they were they were a decent team they played three up top uh, we changed the formation again which again I said was wrong to do so because we started with a 4-4-2 we quickly go back in second half to a 3-5-2 and it's a lot easier for us but it was a tough game you know it was their last game at that ground so they were saying goodbye and moving to a new ground so if they wanted to finish on a high and they ran themselves into into the ground but Mike Norton uh, he brought that ball down tremendously and he just tucked it away and you know it was uh, it really set it all up for, for the Barwell game and uh, you know he his work this season has been absolutely superb he hasn't scored as many goals but that's because he's been couldn't providing he's a different role in the first half of the season he, he, at times like he couldn't he couldn't yeah of course yeah they, well, get we a kick at all we're playing a different weird. formation again yeah, we're, exactly. we, start with a, yeah. we start with a different formation we get the two guys up top and things click and it's no it's no coincidence that you know with those two at the top uh, up yeah. top and playing three at the back you know we've got that 19 game unbeaten run 
Um, but again, you know, he said he said in this program that you know he signed for another season. It's tremendous. And what he can do, though, he'll bring a lot of experience to the younger players that come through. And if we've got these three players that are going to be working pre-season with us from the under-21s, it'll only be a benefit to them if that's the kind of position that they play, because he can learn a lot from him. We're going to move him on, though, if we get to any playoffs. Well, you did say that, didn't Chris Christmas. Uh, 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 yeah, so we'll for... see how it's looking. If, it, if it's looking like a playoff, he's got to go. <laughs> but just got a sign for the team that's doing well. Yeah, yeah that's the yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Swampy um, calling the tactics right again there, and it's, uh, it's that <laughs> level of expertise that's going to see Margie borrow um, Chris Woods, the outgoing Manchester United goalkeeper's earpiece that he wears in games, and just have FCUM radio piped in during the game so that he knows what to do in advance rather than when it comes to recording this show. So from Stamford, I'm going to make a bridge into the next game uh, because Norton scored in that as well against Ashton. Not really a portent of what came. It was like a 2-0 and you think when it came to playing Ashton seriously... This game maybe, maybe gave a level of complacency after another com- uh, comeback? I, I, don't, I don't think so. I think the yeah. Ashton game, I mean, we always said that Ashton, I've seen them several times this season, they were always going to be difficult. Dale Johnson up top, yeah. he's a tremendous player, and uh, I think everyone saw that in the, in the semi final. Um, but we, we, we acquitted ourselves, we, we got the victory out of that game, uh, and I thought really that should have given us the impetus to be able to go on. We we could have, we should have and we did learn probably a lot more about Ashton but they equally learn a lot about us because mm-hmm. they changed the tactics so they changed the way we were to play and it's for us to be able to match that and I think on the day or on the evening that did quite come off for FC United but the the, the victory against Ashton for me um, we finished sixteen points ahead of them you know and you expect to be beating them I've, they played very well against Chorley um, to get into that playoff position but you know they've been a little bit up and down throughout the season FC United have been going that superb run. And really, I thought that victory it was it was it was hard fought, mm. but well deserved. And there should have been no reason why we shouldn't have gone into the semi uh, against them with a very lot of optimism well, and uh, encouragement. Was a reason the the tiredness because you go in playing Bauer, you know, a, a three 0 win on title decided day, and yet you don't win the title. Yeah, it's tired, it's, yeah, it's tired, it's a good point. I mean, I said I think I, I think we discussed this one bit at some point as don't well. Me. But uh, when you go on a run where you 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 don't lose for 19 games and you win 12 of them on the spin, you don't want to change the team. But at some point, that's going to catch up with you. You know, these, these are lads who are semi-pros, they're working during the day. I know it's a, it's a cliche, this. But it's true, they, they're working during the week. They're going to get tired at the end of the season. I think They were off the pace in that game throughout, uh, weren't they, really? You know, and it showed uh, in the semi-final, you know, and like you say, you know, Bucks rested a few players on the Saturday. Um, yeah, but not that many, in all fairness, did they? They didn't, it wasn't that many to be fair, not Bucks, Ashton, Ashton, sorry. Ashton, Bucks yeah. Uh, uh, Ashton did, they did, they did rest a few, uh, where, where, like I said, we couldn't do it because we were going for the going for the title. But I also think that they came, they came in uh, as underdogs into that game and I think they responded They responded well to that. I mean the Barwell things, like you say, we, that day was just important to just get three points and do your job and make Charlie win it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the, there'd be nothing worse than to have... Charlie to have drawn and was to have drawn, and you yeah. know, it's just a shame Buxton couldn't have put the effort in. Well, to beat Ch- or to at least yeah, get Charlie to the game. Well, you're getting into Kevin Keegan you, territory. You can't, you can't yeah. say things like that in affairs because Buxton actually played uh, hit, hit a fair, pretty much a full team. And yeah. well, I'm not saying they didn't put the effort in. It's just a shame if that five percent yeah. more that have equalised, we'd have won the league. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good comeback. They were they were playing against Chorley, you know the league, you know, the, the, the team that have won the league and uh, been there from the, virtually the beginning of the season all the way through. Mm. Uh, Injuries, we played yeah. the same eleven most of those weeks. Well, that carries you through. That's that's winning. Well, yeah, 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 they, carry, they carry you through, and unfortunately, just on the day, you know, we we the, the, good. They, they, they done the they done the homework. They, They, they they got the equaliser, but from what you say, because I obviously wasn't at the game, you know, we we wasted time from fifty six minutes onwards. I thought we wasted too much time in that game. I thought I thought we did once we scored. Um, I, th- I thought we just. Slapped I, I'd, a little I'd bit. make a I'd make a plea after that game as well because I know I, without doing a Walsh speech here, I think one of the things is we we were all gutted, so gutted after that that result. Uh, I mean, it was a case of you know you and I were saying that's it with football, weren't we? For yeah, about ten minutes until yeah. the first bank came in, and then it was uh, we were looking at the fixture list. I was again the night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it was one of those I remember because of my age. I remember seventy six cup final. I, yeah, I remember eighteen seventy six. Eighteen seventy six. I remember being at Anfield when Liverpool won. 
and uh, United didn't win the title, yeah, Leeds won the title that time, I remember being away at uh, by Leverkusen when uh, we lost the semi-final and that was up there with those occasions for me and the difficulty is everybody comes away from the ground, I was out with a large number of people that go to both FC or Manchester United, go, some go to both last weekend and everybody had just had enough, we just want a break and it's really difficult for the club that because now's a key moment for the club and everybody's saying, let's forget it, when the fixtures come up, we'll do the friendlies, we'll do whatever. But as Walsh said earlier on, the club doesn't stop and it's a key moment now to mm. keep people there. And that's hard and that's why it has been difficult. Because if we'd have gone in as winners, it wasn't the fact that we'd have gone into a new league or anything like that. Because in a way, being in the same league helps us, as I do match day ops, it actually helps us knowing the teams we're going to play against. Because a lot of the contacts are there and it makes it easier that way. But to actually go on that crest of a wave that would have happened uh, would have really helped us going forward. We've not been able to do that, but we can't sit back back and sulk. We'll be there again yeah. next season. We'll go again, and uh, and hopefully, you know, everything will go well next year. There's if it doesn't, then that's what football's about. You know, sometimes you win, you know, and sometimes you don't. We don't but it's a key idea. moment at the moment that the supporters, and I know this is going to go out uh, of in, time in, in, a, in a bit. And we, we just really need to keep everybody on board during this close season period and we still need everybody's help to keep the club running. We have to have a very good pre-season. It has to be a solid pre-season. Surely did that, Fowl did that. And, just you know, going to close the show while they carry on. <laughs> <laughs> This well, debate, where are we going next? <laughs> this debate will go on on the forum. I won't be there, but that's uh, plenty of hot chat and good chat from the gents there on the David Icke when he was on Wogan in a shell suit, commemorative sofa. And that's it for the season, <laughs> as well as the month. Uh, we hope it's not been too traumatic. That's the uh, programme as well as the end of the season. All the match highlights are still up at uh, fcum.tv, including a full 17 minutes dedicated to that playoff semi-final with Ashton United. There's a question mark on this auto cue, and it very much echoes my thoughts. A big thank you, as always, to my studio <laughs> guests, Andy Walsh, Mike Norton, uh, everyone at Ashton, yeah. Carl Marginson, yeah. Stephen Wood, Neil Boothman, Swampy and Alan Hargrave, who for that speech alone should continue on the board and for joining me this month. We will be back in the summer to see who Marge has managed to scout in Brazil. In the meantime, you can follow us on Twitter. It's at FCUMTV. All the hashtag you want in there, I don't care. And uh, from everyone here, bring your own ball for this season. Cheerio, and now wash your hands. <laughs> <laughs>